and so happy, Sherry and Debbie, that you're Adria here. has music. Harold? <clears throat> okay. Adria has music. Yes. Yes, a Adria, it's you. Okay. Um, I I've just been very moved and touched by um, how open and how much sharing has been uh, done with the experience of grief recently in our class. Um, this has been an incredibly safe space and I appreciate so much everybody making themselves vulnerable uh, in expressing their grief and it's helped me quite a bit with my own and it brought me to this movement of Bach for you this morning. <clears throat> Spectacular, spectacular. Thank you so much, Adria. What a gift you are to all of us. Thank you very much. All right, we have more offerings this morning. Uh, we are up to Ira. Ira, can you unmute yourself and I will find you here. Okay. Wow. View. Okay. What is going on here? Am I being heard? Yes, you are. You are. Okay, great. Um, so this is actually uh, the, the, this is three uh, verses or three stanzas, I should say, but the line breaks didn't seem to come through, but- that's Where do you want the line, line breaks, breaks Ira? Ira? Three, three, and three. Thank you. There you go. Because I'm still on my haiku role here. So these are all um, in haiku form. Whose words can I trust? Deceit is all around me and God remains still. The poor, the wretched have no one to speak for them, yet God remains still. Sinners, frauds and saints all vanish into the void, but God still remains. Mm. 
Ira. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Talk to us. Thank you. Um, so I actually, I didn't think I was going to be able to do a Psalm 12 offering. Nothing. I, I sat down and just it wasn't coming. It wasn't coming. And then on Sunday uh, morning, uh, Kenneth and I go to a, a weekly Sunday morning heart circle for gay men. Uh, and I was sitting in the circle and suddenly I, something someone said in the circle just flooded my mind. And this, this just came, it mm. just spilled out. Isn't that I mean, fantastic? I, um, so, you know, the Psalm is so much about words and about language and speaking. And what I was playing with here was, uh, the idea of still, the, 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 the word still, because it has so many different meanings. Um, and so God remaining still is stillness, silence, you know, not, not uh, you know, quiet. God remaining quiet, not responsive, but still also has this other mm -hmm. meaning of I don't know how to explain it, but you know, like when yes. you say, are you still there? Or yes. is, is the psalm class still going on? Yeah. Uh, uh, that it's a continuum of some kind. It's, it's something that's continuing in time. So, um, so in the first two, uh, you know, the first two stanzas uh, is this notion of God not responding, you know, I, deceit is everywhere and God is just nowhere to be found or nowhere to be heard or not speaking to to me or to us and then in the psalm itself you know in the original where, where it says that God is speak will speak for the poor and the wretched but here I kind of turned that on its side yeah or upended it and said, God is, yet God remains still. And then in the last stanza, I was thinking about how in the end, like if everything is a big cycle, that, you know, there might be some point in time, it could be billions and billions of years from now, but, you know, when we, when we think about the creation story, Brashit, that, you know, there was nothing but God before there was anything else. And maybe we're going to go back to a point in time when there will be nothing else but God. Mm -hmm. And so the notion, but God still is there. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of what was going on in my head when, I, when this came out. I think it's profound, Ira, in its simplicity. It just, it's so deep. And I really, a few things that stand out to me. First of all, that the word God appears in all of the stanzas and the word I is only in the first one. There is, so you kind of, even in that use of language, the repetition, of course, that third line, the end, yet, and but. If you just looked at those three words, which start that third line of the haiku, uh, I find even those three words, and yet, but. It's a, all this is true, yet, and but there's a I find that beautiful and I love what you do with still and I feel like you really capture that first the first um, stanza really captures this sense of deceit and lying which uh, fills the world and the psalm is just full of that and then the second a consciousness of who the who really ends up suffering and then the third this sense of there might be an ephemeral here that is that is so much bigger, that infinity is so much bigger than what's finite. And as you say, we don't know what the timeline is, but that infinity on whatever timeline it is, um, is infinite and finite yeah. is finite. We just don't know the timeline. So yes. I really, really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Ira. Thank you, Ira. And, and anyone else, if I put up your psalm and the, the formatting or line breaks or something don't look right, let me know because I am, trying to make uh, corrections on the fly here so that we have our final copy. Anyway, Sarah Siegel. 
right. For Michelle and Giacello singing her sensitivity cover. A Psalm of David, the son my parents never had. Mm. My parents prayed for a boy to name David after my grandfather. Instead, they got me minus the vanished Y chromosome, a lesbian who others too often read as male. God, deliver a new kind of man, I say with tongue in cheek. Then Michelle's gorgeous female saw, uh, voice sings also with tongue in cheek. You need a man, not any man, warm and sensitive, that's what I can give. In 1990, it seemed that Rel Ralph Tresvant's original version with the same lyrics played daily on WGCI-FM. I would sing along swaggering in the privacy of my little Vietnam apartment in Chicago. Mine was a shy sort of swagger that I didn't dare display publicly. Sometimes I even put on a peacock, navy blue, magenta, marigold, Liberty of London tie and button down shirt. I had splurged and bought both when I earned only 18,088. God had begun the process of helping me by then. God, I prayed successfully, deliver me. Please let a woman be attracted to me even though I didn't fulfill my parents' dream of being David. God refined me and helped me be silver-tongued enough to win a woman's love. Since 88, God has kept me safe whenever I wear clothes that many would say are better suited to someone named David. God, please keep shielding me from anyone who would want to knock down my presence, stature, and style. Wow. It's fantastic, Sarah. And again, you're using your life, your experience, your deep knowledge to really transform this language. And yet to hear the echoes of the psalm through it all, fantastic. So speak to us a little bit. Thanks. Um, you know, I, I, I want oh, nothing more when- that. Yeah. I just love your- What's that? I love your relationship to the word, to the name David here. I know I keep coming back to it, um, but because uh, it was my grandfather's name and I was supposed mm -hmm. to be named after him. Anyway, um, I, uh, I want nothing more than to escape from current events usually, uh -huh. you know, except for COVID, I can't. I, I can't write, this was like screaming our current administration and I'm like, no. Um, uh -huh. But what also was screaming at me was, I asked you during our study of it, doesn't the word ish seem to be here like a thousand times? You know, no, is this, and you said, no, it's your imagination. The ish comes out or, you know, man is all over every Psalm or lots of Psalms anyway. But I also thought um, this, uh, uh, hey, a uh, five who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are with us. Who is master over us? This is the Tehillim I've been using. And I was thinking about, the entitlement of 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 some guys and uh, you know cis white men I guess and and I was remembering um, a woman in college said to me uh, I would rather sleep with the scummiest man than a woman and I remember thinking and those guys are all pretty sure that they can sleep with you you know and and I did not come out to her and. Anyway, so this was sort of my, um, this <laughs> to, uh, or something, you know, my, my, I, it's, it started off bitter, maybe it's still a little bitter at my co competition with straight men, but I think I channeled it into something, you know, less than, uh, than bitter, um, something slightly, slightly playful, but slightly mm -hmm into this by the way is the uh the the tie That's that i bought tie? oh yeah. wow fantastic yeah so thank you that's i think all of my Beautiful. commentary great really love it and, oh. I, and also i love your use of the silver tongued here to be a to yeah. also in contrast to the kind of language of what tongues uh the, the negative use of tongue in this psalm a lot right. to show that there are ways that you know what those who can speak well, also that you can do good things with it, like winning a woman's love. That's a positive. And using silver in that way, I love that. I highly recommend people listen. Thank you. I highly recommend people listen to um, 
the, the sensitivity cover. Uh, for anybody who knew the original song, it's it's amazing. But even if you didn't, um, and I'll I'll make sure it's back in uh, Facebook. Yeah, thanks, Rama. Put, re put the recording in Facebook. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Beautiful. Love it. Harold, we can't hear you. You are muted. I posted this on my own Facebook page. There's a review today in the New York Times about a book about the woman who wrote Harriet the Spy. Yes. Who, lived an out lesbian life in New York City in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And she's wearing what looks like a Brooks Brothers button-down men's Oxford cloth shirt in one of the pictures. Yes. Harold, it, they had it in the Wall Street Journal, a big, um, she had on a tool belt there, I was amazed. <laughs> they had a, over the weekend, they had a huge uh, review oh. of it. Yeah. That's what Harriet wore. Harriet kept her, her notebook yep. in her toolbox. Anyway. Anyway, great. Linda Solomon. Linda, I okay, know I'm know. here now. <laughs> Good. Okay, this is an attempt to explain Psalm 12 to myself. David is singing and the eight-stringed lyre is being strummed to accompany him. O oh, Adonai, save me in yourself. There remains not one righteous man that I can see. I thought it would be safe to come out, mm -hmm. but the slim, slippery tongued eels are out there and it is not safe for anyone, not even you. Is there not one to trust to speak for you? No, not one. Those who have the stage down sing a, a false god. Their speech is smooth, smarmy, oily. Neighbors gather and spread such falsehoods fake news. All is not lost. The eternal one has the might of right, justice at God's right hand. And so our beloved God will slash the tongues of those these boasters with their flabby lying lips. You know who you are. Those of you who pay obeisance to an evil man and you say, who can override our words or our new master? Oh, exalted one, do you hear us? Your true followers, although we are poor, vulnerable, downward, and plundered and raped. Ah, I hear the voice. God says, it is time to rise up in the name of these, my faithful. I will provide a witness to this time so that the righteous will be spared. Oh, how long I have yearned to hear those words from my, the good, these pure words like the silvery songs that have been the voice of God in my head. We now know that it is you, beloved master of all, who can guard us and spare us from this evil. But we must be ever vigilant because where evil men are allowed to encircle the good and the good while they shout aloud their falsehoods, None of us are safe. Wow. Love this, Linda. And I love the way you did the line by line and we see the nine verses. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about writing it. Well, it immediately, this, this uh, psalm immediately made me think of uh, Trump and yeah. the Trumpsters and the trumpeters. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I needed to allude to them, but not necessarily name them because yeah. I think it's a song for all time. Mm -hmm. And there are evil people at different times in this world. <clears throat> so that's why I kept it um, this way. And um, I didn't want to bring in justice. And I, I, it was only this morning that I was able to really get that in there, that um, that's Ruth Beta Ginsburg, of course, and she's at God's right hand. And so God now has the ability to splash, slash the tongues of mm -hmm. the boasters, mm -hmm. the flabby lying lips. I love that one, those yeah. words. So um, it, it's just my word, line by line, That's really. Excellent. You did a beautiful job making Thank it you. contemporary, but also, as you said, maintaining the timelessness of the of the truths that exist. Mm -hmm. And I like that you put 
God's voice, so to speak, what's eternal in bold. So that yes. you are contrasting that in a certain just by yes, the I am. You're playing yes. the format, and that's a beautiful way to do it. Um, and also ending with this, as others have pointed out, verse nine is a little bit takes us back. It's always not good, you know. Always not resolved. It's not all tied up in a nice little bow like a Hollywood ending, and we could all just relax. Verse nine is there is a little bit of that foreshadowing that, and by you're saying, but we must be ever vigilant. Um, none of us are safe is a very powerful ending to this. Thank you, Linda. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Shep and Shep, I believe, has a designated reader in Sherry. Sherry is my voice. She's my Aaron. <laughs> O oh Lord, when the faithful were almost no more and the loyal nearly vanquished, you proclaimed, I will help them. And you did. You sent your people a chosen leader to finally end the cries of the poor and the needy. Your words are as pure as refined silver. No longer will we suffer hearing the words of the arrogant one. He and his minions spoke words of duplicity. May the Lord cut off their lips. Who's supposed to be next? The baseless and the wicked will roam the earth and have no peace, but you, Adonai, will protect and guard the righteous. A grateful people thank you for delivering us in hour of need. So it seems like we have two versions here. Am I seeing this written version seems to be a little different than Sherry than the one you have? Yeah, yeah I added some <laughs> stuff in. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, is that, so little, I didn't finish. So is Sherry's the uh, final version? No, the one that you got is the one uh -oh. named, named Joseph. Yeah. Uh oh, okay. So it's okay. It's okay. okay. Sherry, can you just read the, can you read the one on the screen then so we could all hear it? Yes, all. sure. I'm so yeah. sorry. No, it's this is an artist in the midst of art, you know, things like that. <laughs> Constantly Work revising, know it well. Yeah. Oh God, when the faithful were almost no more and the loyal nearly vanquished, you proclaimed, I will help them. And you did. You sent your people a chosen leader named Joseph, who is like your servant Moses. He will surely do your work to finally end the cries of the poor and the needy. We have wandered in the wilderness for four long years. Our redemption is near. Your words are as pure as refined silver. No longer will we suffer hearing the words of the arrogant one. He and his minions spoke words of duplicity. May the Lord cut off their tongues and lips and tongues. The baseless and the wicked will be banished to roam the earth and have no peace. But you, Adonai, will protect and guard the righteous. A grateful people thank you for delivering us in hour of need. The covenant of your rainbow endures. Wow, so Shep, you would seem, this is very hopeful. Talk to us a little bit, Shep, and thank I you. I am hopeful. Well, I, I figured I'd do this instead of for the perspective of we're still under uh -huh. Trump's rule. This is after it, and we're thanking God for deliverance. Uh -huh. It's how I feel, and I'm, yes, I'm hopeful. You that's know? And, uh -huh. and you know, the rainbow was adopted by the gay people, but it's the rainbow for all humanity. So uh -huh. I just want to reference that and us too, you know, at the same time. And um, I just thought of, I didn't think of the, uh, like someone else previously did with the Aaron uh, Moses with the speech impediment, but I thought, you know, our new president actually has a Jewish name, Joseph. Uh -huh. So just throw uh -huh. it in, because <laughs> it's Joseph, you know. <laughs> So, um, and he is like our, we, our country's leader, like, Mo, like Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt. So our Joseph will lead us out of Trump land. Beautiful. Whatever. We need some hope. And that's a really beautiful expression of it, Shep. And using the language and the structure of what we've understood in Psalms, there are Psalms of absolute joy and celebration. And so good for you. Well, I'm a hopeful person all the time. And also, are, like... Like Linda, I didn't want to put it in our time with actually naming Trump, I mean, uh -huh. Joseph, it's a, it's a Jewish name, whatever. But I wanted to make it a little more universal, though, to could Beautiful. last. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Sherry. Beautiful, Shep. Thank you, Sherry. Beautiful. Thank you. 
My pleasure. Wat oh, sorry. Linda Watskin. Unmute. You're unmuted. Someone's unmuted. Uh, I think, am I unmuted? Yes. Uh, this is called Two Sides to Words. When lies intrude, displacing truths with fabrications, a collision exists between words that ferment unease and words that cross boundaries to smooth, rough places to offer hope. When people speak with hollow words, with words of derision, with words that spew unrest, Adenoy looks upon his gift of language, mangled, distorted by supple tongues and shorn of love, and seeks those who use words to bless, to love. Mm. Beautiful. Speak to us. This is really beautiful. Um, I was thinking about the duality of the world, that um, everything has the two sides. There's, there are words that heal and words that destroy, and our words construct uh, the world, and how truth and lies often collide, and some words make the attempt to cross over, mm -hmm. to find some common ground and how God looks with sadness um, at an ill use of language. And <clears throat> also, uh, I'm of the, the opinion that how do I know what I think until I read what I write? Uh -huh. So some of that sort of occurred to me after I had finished uh, reading it. Um, this is the power of, of creativity, right? We're, we're reaching into a part of ourselves that isn't always necessarily conscious and finding a way to express it. We learn about ourselves as much as other people can learn about themselves reading our words or mm -hmm. experiencing things that come from our creative selves, whether it's music or, or, uh, or visual arts. And so mm -hmm. I think that's, and that's a beautiful thing to experience. And this, I just really love the rhythm of it. And also by ending that, exactly as you said, that God is looking at us with love. If we can do the opposite of what the deceit and the lying lips and the negativity is, but if we can use words to bless and to love to embrace, as opposed to, uh, to hollow words and words of derision and words that spew unrest. And that gives us agency and power. It's not only about stopping what other people are doing. I think that's the part of what I love about what you've written here. We can't necessarily have control over what other people do. And those who are using language in these negative ways, we can't necessarily control, but we can sure, surely impact the world by the way we use language and how what our words do. And we have to always ask ourselves, are, are our words hollow? Are our words full of derision? Are our words spewing unrest? Or do our words, are they uh, full of blessing and love and embracing? So I think you've given us this fantastic personal challenge and I really love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like it. It feels like one of the Dara Bernsteins with uh, uh -huh. the three lines and the two and, lines. Too. And no punctuation, very much uh, shorn of structure in that way, but very much, yes. Stephen David Deem. Hi there. I'm unmuted. Yes, you yep. are. Okay, great. Uh, a reflection, dreaming awake, Psalm 12. Holy eternal light of peace, help me. I enter the palace. I look up. I see a golden staircase. A woman who I never met was standing next to me waiting to get on the golden staircase. I felt like I knew her. She was more dressed up than I was. She was wearing a silver amulet with a brilliant blue gemstone in the middle of it hanging between her breasts. I was drawn to the amulet and she told me that it was the purest silver on earth refined seven times by her ancestors who passed it over to her from generation to generation. We stepped on the step of the golden staircase and we were magically elevated. 
we saw our reflection on the smooth silver surfaces surrounding the golden staircase as we rose to the next stage. There was a sidewalk cafe there, little tables and chairs scattered around. We were directed to sit, oops, I lost it. Harold. <laughs> oh, did we lose Harold? I guess so, I have my own version. Okay. All right, Harold will come back. So why don't you um, up yes. here, is Harold back? Okay. Um, Harold, are you here now? Okay. Steve, we, we, Tasha, oh, there's Harold. Harold is here. I got my I got mine up. There was a silver stair. We we went up the golden escalator, and there was a sidewalk cafe there. Little tables and chairs scattered around. We were directed to sit at one of the tables. Bright lights, hotter than the sun, lit us up. There was a plate of grapes on the table. We're back to Harold. Okay. I'm gonna go back. We stepped on the step of the golden staircase and we were magically elevated. We saw our reflection on the smooth silver surfaces surrounding the golden staircase as we rose to the next stage. There was a sidewalk cafe there, little tables and chairs scattered around. We were directed to sit at one of the tables. Bright lights hotter than the sun lit us up. There was a plate of grapes on the table. We were told not to touch them. They were plastic and couldn't be eaten. The purple flowers had no scent. Our plastic glasses were empty. I saw an old man waiter dressed in a tuxedo and indicated silently that we wanted water. He moved his lips, but nothing came out of his mouth and he walked away. When he returned, he had a silver pitcher and he began pouring water into our plastic glasses. He was sweating. Black rivulets of sweat ran down his pale cheeks. There was no water in his pitcher. I smiled to thank him and put the empty plastic glass to my lips to sip. I smiled with my eyes to my partner and the silver amulet caught my eye. The eyes smiled back at me. Someone said we could go now, but we had to walk down the stairs. We were directed to a door that read, do not enter. I turned around to look to see if there was another way out. I saw the workers deconstructing the golden staircase. Silver mirrors were merely foil and were thrown into a heap with the paper mache scraps of gold painted staircase. The woman led me to another door that I could never see with my own eyes. And we escaped into a garden of pure light. There was a banquet table filled with fresh fruit set out for us, a well to, to quench our thirst. And we were laughing and laughing as we stopped to catch our breath. Wow. That is quite an epic story. Tell us, speak to us, Stephen, about you writing it. Well, uh, you know, I had trouble with it. I, I almost, uh, I almost said this is not ready. It's not for, it's not for the public. And I was going to call um, um, uh, Harold this morning and say, don't put it up there. But I sat down and I did another revision. And Harold is amazing because he got it back. He got it perfectly in there. I can't blame him, of course, yeah. for the internet. Uh, but, um, you know, it's my interpretation of a dream. I'm looking at the Psalms and I see most of the Psalm, all the Psalms, in fact, uh, talks to the external deity, the external divide. It's always that God is gonna come from someplace else. It's gonna come, from, and, and my, my obsession with looking for the, the creator, looking for the eternal is internal. So I, I try to create meditations for myself that I can actually use if I'm really getting upset. 
Uh -huh. And that's what I think that my Psalms really are. They're internal meditations and they're meditations that I can offer to other people to take them out of the negative thinking. Now, obviously I just took this right out of life. I've done a lot of work on a lot of movie sets where it looks like it's a palace, but when you turn the corner, it's empty. Uh huh. And it gets well, destroyed all the time. And so it's my metaphor of Trump Tower, the golden yep. escalator. I don't, and uh, 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 Caesar's Palace, which is such a beautiful place, but you know it's made out of paper mache. Uh -huh. And of course, um, you know, I was certainly intrigued by the silver seven times refined as something that goes back to the Garden of Eden. So it drew me to this state. Yeah, well, I just love the parable is such a Jewish, uh, just a, such a Jewish form also. And we haven't explored that so much in this Psalms class, but I love, love, love what you did with it. Uh oh, Bella needs to go out. Go ahead, Bella. So I really love that you jumped from this one form to another one, but exploring those same themes. Fantastic, so creative. And I'm very, very happy that you shared it with us today. I would actually like to get a copy to be able to read it again um, because, well, we're that'll be a whole other project of ours, but I loved it, Stephen, really loved it. Keep going. I keep, I'll say this over and over again. If something is meaningful to you, it will be meaningful to others. If it's authentic, if it speaks some truth to yourself, don't worry about whether it's ready for the public. We're not the public, we're a community of seekers who are exploring these words as a way to find meaning and purpose and, and enlightenment. And even if it might be a draft, it's gonna take us somewhere. And we got to see a couple of, a draft of Shep and whatever today's is. And I bet you if Shep goes back to it tomorrow, it might even look different and that's okay. Thank you, that's exactly you. what I told myself. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> so it. fantastic. Thank you so much. Harold, is that it for Psalm 12? Have we, did we lose Harold again? No, I'm here, am I here, do you hear me? There you are, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I've had wonky, oh, I've had wonky internet. I may be coming and going. So I think that um, we should, uh, we're almost at time. Instead of trying with Psalm 13, we should just play out with Adria and yep, start with I, Psalm 13 tomorrow. How does that sound, Rabbi? I think it sounds perfect. And um, I wanted to say a couple of other Everyone words about number eight. Am I on? Just if we have a couple of minutes before we do the music, because they came up yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? And I realized I didn't say, there were a couple of things about that, about the number eight is seven and eight in Judaism, which is such an interesting, since we have the sevenfold in the seventh verse of this Psalm, which refers to the Shminit, the eight stringed, um liar and somebody pointed out yesterday also i love that the word liar in english sounds like liar a person so that's another uh word play that doesn't exist in the hebrew but uh, is a nice word play in the english so just remember that and look for that actually in other places you'll see references to it so seven think of the things in judaism that are seven the week, the week which we believe is the great Jewish contribution to the world, the concept of a week did not exist before in the ancient Near East, before the, the Israelite religion, the idea of a month existed, right? Because that's connected to the moon. But the idea of dividing the month into four uh, weeks of seven does not exist in the world until we have this, the story of the creation story. So seven, this number of completion is a very powerful one in Judaism. And therefore, as I said, in mysticism, the number eight has a lot of power. It has the, what's the thing that comes after completion? It has a lot of mystical power. So seven occurs, Shavuot, seven weeks of seven, of course. Seven uh, Shemitah years, the, 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 when we have a, uh, what do you call that? A sabbatical Jubilee. year, a Jubilee. sabbatical year, Jubilee year, et cetera, seven. And what happens in the, for the number eight is a number that has this, what is beyond? So uh, a boy is circumcised on the eighth day, not on the seventh day, which there are a lot of commentary about that. And the eighth day is this level beyond, beyond the normal. Uh, there are a whole bunch of things about eight. Shemini Atzeret is the eighth day that follows. Most Jewish holidays are seven days, of course, in diaspora, now eight. 
And eight has this power in uh, what exists beyond the natural world, uh, what begins, what takes something beyond what's just complete. And so we'll, we'll look for it and we'll talk a little bit more about it in other places in the Psalms. But um, I'm glad that somebody pu pulled out that this Psalm has both seven in it and eight, which is a very interesting thing. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do music. One, one, a few housekeeping things. Rabbi, I'm going to grant your wish today. Oh, what's my wish? Your wish was to see all of the Psalms because I'm putting aside my perfectionist editor's tendencies. Uh -huh. And we are now done with Psalm 11 offering, 12 offerings, and I'm going to wrap it up and make a PDF and send it to everybody. Wow. And Annika had done Psalm 11, and then we're going to catch up. But now when we're done with the, the day we're done with the offerings, the PDF goes out and the authors can contact me if they want any changes after that. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, we're just going to do it a little quicker. Okay. So your, your and everyone else's wishes will come true. How about Fantastic. that? Fantastic. And uh, we'll keep exploring different things that we'll be doing with the Psalms, uh, with the synagogue community at large. But right yeah. now, we'll just keep studying. So tomorrow, have you sent out Psalm 13 to folks? Uh, I have not because it's on it's on Safari. And I think that I will, I'll be sending all that out this afternoon. Okay, great. But anyone can just go to Safari and it's right there. And I'm hoping that by this point, everybody has a Hebrew text at home for Good. Psalm so 13. So today, tonight, this afternoon, uh, read through the Psalm. Read through Psalm 13. Come to class with having done just a read through, or if you have any of the commentaries, read some of them. And we're going to start with Psalm 13 tomorrow, which is the great Psalm uh, traditionally said when one is in crisis, when there's a terrible, uh, terrible things going on, either personally or politically. So memorize it. All yeah. right, <laughs> Adria. Just play on us that, out with your beautiful on that, Bach. On that and note. by the way, 13 is a good number in Judaism too. We'll talk about that also. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adria. Just spectacular. Just spectacular. Thank you, everybody. Thank so you. folks, the room will stay open for about five minutes for those who want to hang out and schmooze. Good to see everybody. See you tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we get to study Psalm 13. Start our study of Psalm 13. Bye, everybody. Bye.
Rabbi, I, it's Barbara Grindel. I don't know if you saw. Yesterday what? I walked my dog and I broke my ankle. Oh, no. <laughs> With I all that good that. vibe coming from this class and from oh. all of the vibes of, of Jonathan's friends, I was walking the two dogs on wet leaves, didn't even know what happened, down, and I heard a click. Uh, we went right to the emergency room and yeah, surgery Monday. Uh, so yeah, but I'm here. You're I mean, staying I'll be in here. the Cape. Yeah, now we have to stay. We're supposed to yeah. leave today. Yeah. Cheryl was like not happy. I yeah. said it's meant to be. God's sending us a message. We should not yeah. be in Florida. We should be in the Cape. I don't know why. And the other thing I wrote is I love when you talk about any math term. I wrote that infinity <laughs> coming from you it was so fantastic. Well, maybe you, you could you, talk about a mathematical understanding of infinity. I understand. Maybe, is, maybe, but you know more math than you think you know. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. No, yes, you do. It's a yeah. phobia. It will we'll cure you. Okay. I'll make it my, I'll make it my, my cause. Okay. But <laughs> I think infinity is a really important concept and certainly of theological, course. theologically, it's really important. So maybe you'll prepare a little presentation on infinity and math. Well, okay, we'll think about it. I'll think about it. You're getting me nervous now. Okay, <laughs> all right. I have to concentrate on my nervous. ankle. I can't oh, even right. yes. walk. I'm in a wheelchair. I mean, it's just, oh my god! Oh god! I, I just couldn't believe the timing was so horrible. I mean, really. And you know, and I almost sent, and I had a walk from where the dogs were on the property, but still wasn't at, to the front door where Cheryl was in the house. And I almost let the dogs go like Lassie and banging, you know, come yeah. for help, you know, help sure. me. How did you get? But, the uh, I don't know. I, I hobbled to her and, and, you know, she couldn't believe it, but one of those things, it's not the first time I broke, I broke an ankle many, many years ago. So the same ankle. So anyway, yeah, I'll, you know, this class and all of the CBST stuff, that's all this positive stuff will definitely help me through. So thank you. Well, we're, we're rooting for you. So we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. I'll be here. And it's, Monday, it's I may not. The surgery is outpatient, Barbara? Outpatient, yes. Thank, yeah. thank God, yes. And I'll get a COVID test before, of course. Make yeah. sure. You know, but I'm fine. I haven't done anything. Oh, we yeah. haven't gone anywhere. So, But thank you. I appreciate it. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. I'm getting off. <laughs> All right. Feel better. Thank you. Everybody, thank you. And she didn't know, even though I put it on. And then I told her about infinity. Uh oh, wait. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love that. I do. I really love when she mentions math. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. But then she, you know, it's like it's like in a, as a teacher when you go to a, a meeting and you say there's a problem in the hall, then it becomes your job to fix it. That's Barbara. You're happen. on. You're you're on. Uh, you're on speaker now. <laughs> no, I knew that. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. I was good, sharing good. that information, of course. I knew oh. that. Oh, okay. so I was just talking to Cheryl? No, 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 no. <laughs> I couldn't no. tell. I it sounded like you were talking to Cheryl, but, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm After, sorry about your foot. Oh, God. I can't believe it. I just, I, I don't know why. But, you know, I really believe that God had a plan, that we were not supposed to go back to Florida. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that would have kept us from going. Right. I couldn't go. You know, it wasn't a decision. Right. I can't go right. in the car and I can't fly. We have to be right. here. And it's outpatient surgery, thank God. And, uh, you know, it'll be six sure. weeks of recovery, but it sucks. It's not great. It but sucks. There's <laughs> yeah. worse. There's worse. Yeah. Yeah. Safer, yeah. probably on the Cape. Uh, is it probably is? Yes. I'm on Make, the Cape. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's probably safer there. I know. Um, I thought I about think that. So. But oh, have to Canada, you know? It is. It so is, it's, it's yeah. definitely safer as long as um you know the, there aren't a lot of hospitals here that's what always scares me so oh, the yeah. cape can't handle a lot but right now it's much safer on the cape than it is in florida and I mean, it's certainly to to safer Boston. to have surgery too so right. and it's you know it's an orthopedic uh, trauma surgeon so but you know going in a wheelchair not being able to put any pressure on the other leg for like a long time the dogs got really nervous from the wheelchair too Looks like they didn't know me. I had to pick them up. That's why I have a picture on Facebook of my of myself with the two dogs, so that they would be calm and know it's just me, you know. But uh, in the wheel, they know something's wrong. The dogs, they're acting very differently. So they sense, you know, they know. Uh, I'll get through this. Will you be working with our math anxieties? 
Oh, it's funny though. I, that was my joke about what the rabbi said. I should. I, I'm I, so sure I was. That. I was not told there would be any math in the Psalms class. That's very funny. Well, there are four. Yeah, don't math. you remember the, the lesson verses. on gematria? We know. We number all the verses. There's math, right? I mean, well, you know, yes. at, the, at the simplest level. I but do when know how to count. infinity, I get all excited because she <laughs> says she hates math and mm. infinity. You know. <laughs> I mean, we can relate infinity to COVID now because uh, unfortunately that's the way it's going. It's an yeah. exponential equation that goes to infinity. Mm. We want it to stop, but you know, we'll see. Well, I like the, heal fast. What? Heal fast. I'm, I'm sending so. you healing thoughts. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I, this class has changed me. I can't even explain it. I, I'm it's sure everyone me. feels that way. Yeah. Say that again. It's I just changed started me. This class at the Jewish holidays in September. And from yeah. September to now, it's changed me. There's no question. So it changed me obviously for the better. Why I have this leg now, I don't know. Maybe I'm being tested, who knows, I don't know. But I think anyone who's got math phobia just didn't have a good math teacher. That's really what I believe. That if you're, you know, you, you have a, a knowledge of the world, you're smart enough to, to, you know, to learn things, there's no reason. It's just the phobia or the bad teaching in the beginning. Yeah. So, and I had to deal with kids that didn't have much experience in math, um, but I got them to like it. So, yeah. Okay. The first day of class, they said, who hates math? Raise your hand. I said, and I'm not kidding. I want to see. And a million hands went up. And then by the end, they liked it. So. All right. Well, it. maybe Everybody we'll like it math. too. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to do this topic. I really have to get my, my, <laughs> my uh, healing has to come. So we'll see. But I'll think about it. I'll have plenty of time. That's for sure. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. All Mark, right, I'll give you well. back Thank up. you. Thank you. I Mickey, by all. the way, I think anybody that proposes math as a reasonable skill for everyone yes. is A plus on my side because it's like I think most people don't realize it's simply a different language. They think right. of it as something machine oriented, and math in itself is its own language. Well, it's beautiful. I understand it's, it's beautiful. that very simply. And it fits like, together. It makes sense. Yes. Of course, I yeah, get, I get accused of being totally left brained. And so an engineer comes right. out at me and starts talking. You know, I work in higher ed also, but I'm. Are a, you left are you left handed? No, I, well, I'm appendextrous. I'm, I can use both um, hands easily. I'm left handed. And, and 30% of the math department in my high school was left handed. So I think there's something to it. There's that something left handed to it. people like math for some reason. Hmm. I'm not left handed. No, no, no. You could, love, you could love math and not be left-handed. Oh, I but see. I'm saying that more left-handed people love math. That's not the same thing. Oh, okay. And that's a math concept. <laughs> I've had. I've to had. Think about this. Maybe I'll write a little yeah. logic statement or something about math. Hi, anyway, folks. I have to close okay. the room in a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm going now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, of Barbara. Barbara. My life in this uh, in this class. <laughs> oh well, did I leave, 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 leave.